So moving on then, in the next chapter of Deleuze, this chapter is called the fourth series of dualities. And so in this case, he's going to talk about dualities. Before, we had seen that uh, he spoke of the duality of incorporeal uh, events, basically. We have, on the one hand, states of affairs between bodies, events, uh, states of affairs between bodies, rather, which are corporeal, versus the duality of sense effects, which are events proper. Um, so we have that duality, which runs parallel with the duality between um, things on the one hand and propositions or language on the other. Sense will be the frontier between them. Two, in this chapter, he's going to look at a new set of dualities between body and language. Uh, so we have bodies on the one hand, language on the other. And paralleling this, in Lewis Carroll, we have a play with uh, eating on the one hand versus speaking. Uh, Deleuze then says that eating is the operational model that is common to all bodies. All bodies are either there uh, to be eaten or they consume, especially in Lewis Carroll. So that's one series uh, of meaning that he generates. And on the other hand, there is the, the problem of speaking. And Alice finds herself in a number of situations, and uh, Deleuze raises the question, food situations, Deleuze raises the question, uh, which is more dangerous, to speak of food or to eat words? Uh, and so in Lewis Carroll, we have this idea of eating words. This is an old idea, by the way. This is a biblical idea. The eating of the word uh, is an idea that comes out of the Jewish prophetic tradition in which the Logos uh, is incarnated in a scroll that Yahweh gives to his prophets, such as Ezekiel, who eat the scroll. And once they eat the scroll, they interiorize the power of the, of, of the word, the Logos, and they are therefore enabled to speak and prophecy uh, on a plane that is above the rest of, of humanity. And of course, uh, that tradition of eating the word in the Old Testament becomes, in the New Testament, the word, uh, the Logos, which becomes the word, that we later eat in the communion meal when we eat the, the wafer, we're eating the body of, of Christ, but we're also consuming uh, the power of his discourse to open up and enlighten and illumine our consciousness. So this idea of eating words uh, is a transplantation into a children's novel of a very old metaphysical idea in the Western tradition. So he wants to analyze the consequences then of eating words, and Deleuze says that um, for eating of words then what, we, what happens is that the operational model that's common to bodies, which has to do with the consumption of food, is then moved up from the depths to the surface, to the uh, surface events, surface effects. So we have a movement from depth um, and things that are common to depths such as social gaffes. Alice uh, makes a number of social gaffes. She's presented with a pudding and she gives the wrong response to it. So she commits these so social gaffes, but once we move up from the depths to the surface of things, Deleuze says we, the language uh, problems change from that of gaffes to stuttering, and stuttering is a movement, a gliding across surfaces from left to right. So it's a surface event, a surface effect. And then he moves on and he says, uh, so we have this problem where <clears throat> sense does not exist outside of propositions. Sense has no ontological existence unto itself, even though it is very different from these old philosophical ideas. Uh, it doesn't exist outside the proposition, although it's attributable to the proposition, uh, but it, it is attributed as a property to states of affairs. And he says that the event subsists in language, and it, it inheres in it and subsists in it, uh, but it happens to things. Uh, but sense lies on this frontier like a playing card with two sides. The one side is the realm of things, the other side is the realm of propositions, and sense is, is what mediates them, what articulates the difference between bodies and language. And so he says that what happens then is that there's this twofold articulation in which with, um, with events, with states of affairs, with, with things, we have states of affairs or, or causal relations between bodies, but we also have ideational attributes that the bodies have, and on the other hand we have propositions, and propositions have two aspects to them, which is denotative and um, expressive. And the denotative aspect has to do with substances and adjectives uh, that denote specific things, specific particular contingent things, whereas the verbs have to do with the sense meaning, the sense event itself. Verbs are events, they are sense events within language. So what Deleuze then wants to do is to move on and to show how um, the proposition has a, a basic duality inherent to it, the duality of denotation on the one hand and expression on the other. And expression has to do with sense. 
and he's going to say then that this previous, this earlier duality of uh, states of affairs between physical bodies and incorporeal sense events now incarnates itself inside the proposition itself. So we find that same duality now within the proposition, uh, within the proposition itself, especially as it's reflected uh, in the writings of Lewis Carroll. And he quotes a passage to the effect: Carroll begins to generate uh, in his text two series. One series that tends to have an association of connotations with eating, and another series that tends to have. Uh, it's a language play that tends to, to have a reference to forms of meaning or sense expression or uh, other meanings other than the denoted sense. And he quotes a passage in which the crown, uh, the, the mouse is explaining a story to the duck in which the crown was offered to William the Conqueror and he says, uh, the mouse says to the duck, he found, he found it advisable. And the duck says, found what advisable? Uh, and the mouse says, it. He found it advisable. Don't you know what it is? And the duck responds by saying, I know what it is. Whenever I encounter it, it's in the form of a worm or a frog. And he thinks that the it, he plugs the it in in a denotative sense to refer to any kind of food item that comes along his way, frogs, worms, etc. But the mouse means it in a different way, in a significative way, a sense way that refers to the earlier proposition itself, namely that the crown was offered to William the Conqueror and he accepted it because he found it advisable to do so. So uh, we have these two parallel series of meanings that run along in Lewis Carroll that have to do with um, eating and speaking, and consumption on the one hand, references to animals that consume things, but that also simultaneously refer to uh, means of expression or uh, meanings. Uh, and so we find these two series that tend to meet uh, in an asymptotic curve in the form of a single word or metaphor that brings the two together and expresses them in a single image. And he quotes a, a passage at the end uh, that talks about how the gardener is walking along and he saw an elephant. He thought he saw one thing, but he really saw another. He thought he saw an elephant playing a pipe, but then when he looked again, he saw that it was really a letter from his wife. And then the same thing, he looked and he thought he saw an albatross whirling around a lamp, but he looked again and he saw that it was a postage stamp. Same thing for the last verse, he looked and he thought he heard an argument saying that he was a pope, but he looked again and he saw that it was a model bar of soap. And so in each case, we have a reference to an animal or a person, the person making the argument in the case of the pope, uh, that consumes things or is capable of being consumed. Uh, that he thinks he sees, that's the denotative aspect, but what it really turns out that he sees is the sense aspect that has to do with something, a letter from his wife, or a postage stamp, or a bar of soap that conveys meaning, that's a signifier that conveys uh, meaning and sense. And so Carroll plays with this in his language, which operates, as does the language of every great artist, Joyce is a classic exemplar of this, on multiple levels simultaneously, and here with Lewis Carroll and his play with what are called portmanteau words, uh, he plays around with multiple levels of meaning simultaneously uh, that come together in single images. The gardener creating a path uh, that brings the two meanings, the denotated and the expressive meaning on either side of the garden path, together in the path that he's walking as he walks along. So that's the sense of this brief chapter on uh, dualities.